Greetings. So you are once again welcome to my channel. We are Flamingo. Okay, well, awesome. Today, we want to start a topic in further mathematics, relations and functions. But before we do, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do that. And interact with us at the comment section. And share our videos. And don't forget to like as well. Okay, so let's start. Relations and functions, right? But I want to start with functions. So relations and functions combine functions. So we look at the types of functions that we have. We have one to one, one to many, many to one. Different types. So let's look at one to one function, where one member in the domain gets or picks on another member in the whole domain. So this is a map, M A P, a map to E, B map to F, C map to J. This is domain. Domain just mean confined, right? Domain, a territory. So this is the domain of X. It is called domain. The partner to this is a called domain. That's why they are members of Y. So there is one to one function. Now, how can you show whether a function is one to one? For a function to be one to one, there is a constraint or the condition that you have to put. F of H equals to F of V. Yes, one to one, not one to many, or many to one. Yes, I have it. one boy and one girl, right? Not one girl and so many boys on you. That is many to one. Now, one boy, many girls. That's one to many. We are talking about one boy, one girl. So, f of a equals f of b. So, this implies a equals b. This condition makes the function one to one. Now, let's check. That is the question. Show that the function f of x map onto 1 over x plus 3 is 1 to 1. They are just telling you here that x should not be equal to minus 3. Why? If you put minus 3 here, you get 1 over 0. And 1 over 0, when you point on your calculator, you get math error, sentence error, undefined, right? Now, anything undefined does not exist. So how can you solve that? So whatever method you want to use, make sure you don't put here minus 3. It's just a caution, right? It's not even part of our work. Good. So solution. So I will quote my constraint or the condition. For 1 to 1, f of a must be equal to f of b. f of a means I will put a in the function of x. f of x. So whenever I see x, I put this a there. So let's go. I have 1 over a plus 3. Equals 1 over b plus 3. Now where from this? It is from here. So f of a, you are putting a into the function of f of x. So whenever you see x, you check in a. So you put that this condition. So I do the same thing for the right here. Now uh, this cross multiply. This is not the concept of LCM. You only do LCM when you have plus or minus between the fractions, okay? You cross multiply. So I go with you, you also go with me. So that is that is this, this is what you are seeing. In the time you want to multiply number by the expression, you introduce a bracket, right? So it is the same thing. Nothing happens. Now I will take this b over there to the other variable and take this three to also the number you see there. So that is a minus b, that is true. This three here, this goes uh, minus three. So a minus b equals what? Zero. So I can still carry this b over here. I'll get a equals b. So since a equals b, the function is what? 1 to 1, right? Therefore, f of x is 1 to what? 1. Well, let me put this way. Therefore, f of x is 1 to 1. So there's a function. f of x is 1 to 1. This is true. Okay. Show whether or not the function j defined by this is 1 to 1. Now let's show this one too. So we start from here. So there is the function j. And I want to show whether it is 1 to 1. Now there's a square here, thank you. For 1 to 1, j of a should be equal to j of b. Why should I say f? I'm talking about g, right? Okay, implication. 
1 over a squared plus 3. 1 over b squared plus 3. Good. So I have to do what we call cross multiply. Okay. So for 1 to 1, g of a should be equal to g of b. So I have 1 over a squared plus 3. That is where it's coming from. Now the b area, that is b squared plus 3. I cross multiply. Good. So I will have a squared plus 3 equals b squared plus 3. As usual, I want to group all variables at one side. Numbers also at the other side. That is what I'm going to get. So I have a squared minus b squared equals 0. Now finally, this one also goes there again. So, okay, so I can have a squared here and b squared. Now you remember this, when you want to solve the this always forms a root on this, remember. And I told you, when you take a root of an answer, it's always plus or minus the answer. You saw some in our operation videos, right? Another course of mathematics every day. So that is plus or minus to be from a general quadratic rule, right? So what you see here is this. Do you agree? Yeah. So do you know that when you have this? You are going to get this. This one is nine. Root of 9 will 3. So when you square a number in a square root, it's, it's the number. I guess it. Because when 3 is squared in the square root, it was still the same 3. So this is going to give me plus or minus b. Please, do you agree? Do you see what I did? You see 3 squared in the square root is still root 9. It gave you 3. So when you square something in the square root, you still get a number back. Exactly. Good. Now what you are seeing here is a equals b, or a can also be equal to minus b. That's the meaning of the plus or minus b. Where from this? When you take a root of an answer, it's always plus or minus the answer. Just as sometimes you ignore it, but that's a fact. So that is it. Now you yourself said that for one to one, a should be equal to b. Good. And you have two answers, this and that. It's not one to one. It can only be one to one if they give you a condition as maybe say s is greater than zero. So if you say s greater than zero, then they want you to pick the answer which is greater than zero. That's this. Then it becomes one to one. But if they don't give you any condition like this, you have no right to say it's one to one because we have two answers here. And only one qualifies with one to one, not this. But if they say x is less than zero, it means you want to include this. And they go by s greater than zero, your answer, then don't include this. Good. So, g of x is not 1 to 1 because of this condition here, right? Okay. Good. Okay. Can you show me that a square, a square, it's hard to This two cancel this. This one. Yeah, you see, if this is 3 squared, it will give me my roots, and I also get 3. Now, this 2 cannot cancel this root. That is a big lie. What cancels a root is this. Look at it well. What is outside, not inside? Are you okay? Good. When you square a square root, the square root disappears. So, that is it. Thank you. Okay. So, she is asking me to square both sides here. Yeah. They are already squared. So why should I square both sides again? No, they are already squared. I can't square both sides. That's tautology. Right? When I have a root, that is when I square both sides to get rid of the square root. I can't square both sides here. It forms a root of this. That's the principle. Remember? Any question? Yes. 